This is Cybert signing into Red Alert 3 on the map Battle Base Beta for For the Win 72 Finals. Of course, a big shout out to Rage of Heat for hosting this one once again. Now, this was two turbo tournaments, so we're going to be taking a look at turbo tournament number two, the finals. This is a best of five between this yellow Soviets in the top right hand corner. This is Dimon. Big fan favorite and the Cyan Empire in the bottom left-hand corner. This guy earned a lot of respect in the last for the win. Even though he did not win that tournament, he showed some incredible games and absolutely pushing every player that he went up against to the limits that we saw. In the bottom left-hand corner, this is Sogspitze. I am probably pronouncing that incorrectly. I believe this is a Chinese player. He, uh, he does uh, post some gameplay videos over on... Oh, I forget the Chinese video hosting website. Uh, but also, his apparently he said in the last video, beautiful split of those conscripts there by, uh, by Vindy's. Really nice control for killing that dojo. And boop, misses it once again. <laughs> Pretty much perfect control there by Vindy's. Very nicely done. Uh, even we'll get that Imperial Warrior and a second one without losing two more than two conscripts. Anyways, uh, yeah, so Spitze said that he chose the name of the highest mountain in Germany, which I believe is what that is, uh, because it I, I guess it sounds similar to his handle in Chinese. And then, uh, ooh, blocking that third refinery is super annoying. Uh, super fast super reactor coming out from Dimon, so he's going double refinery keeping the barracks around, and then going directly into the super reactor. Anyways, he chose that name because apparently it sounds similar to his handle in Chinese, so it's kind of a, uh, I guess, a phonetic thing. Anyways, I'm going to be pronouncing his name wrong all night long, but I will pronounce it better than what I said before, which was Zugspitz. So, you know, apparently it's uh, it's like Zugspitze or something. Something like that. There's a T in the pronunciation guide near the beginning, and I don't know how to make that sound because... Spelled with a Z, so I'm trying to blend everything together. Uh, solid opening from Demon, as we saw. Nice control by him. Ooh, losing that flak trooper is a little bit annoying, but not the end of the world. But I love this from Zugspitze. <laughs> Zugspitze? Uh, gonna be dropping that, dropping the barracks down. And of course, Demon realizes that and realizes that he's gonna need to do something about that barracks and also about those uh, those walls before he can really take his third. Fast into the Tier 2, as you can tell from the map, there is no third refinery from Sugspitze. So instead, he's going right into that Tier 2. He's got the Chopper VXs. We've got the Flak Cannon finishing up just now. And, of course, you're going to use that to try and buy yourself some time while your Bullfrogs come on out. Look at this guy, this Dojo Force showing up just to create even more problems. Now, of course, one Bullfrog is good, but Tank Busters will eat that guy up like it's lunch. And, of course, this just means that, hey, you can turn right around with that... Uh, with that Chopper VX, and maybe try and get into it. Now, the range on the Bullfrog, the anti-air range, is pretty darn good. This bear will be able to clean up both of those tank busters, and, of course, the advantage of going fast into that super reactor. Oh, my gosh, forced to sell off the War Factory, a big deal there. He loses the super reactor as well. So, Spitze, he absolutely dominating Demon in this game. This might be GG from here on out. He sold off the War Factory. He thought that was the target of the engineer. It actually was the super reactor. An incredible move here whichever way you uh whichever way you cut it and the second engineer is actually going to get walled in here so a uh, complete surround here with these walls and well the engineer is going to die but uh but he did his job more than enough bears actually do get gunned down two of them or one of them there does get gunned down by that imperial warrior chopper vx on the mcv great plays here from zug spitze and uh, he will be losing his oil derrick, it looks like. Everything else has been pulled back to the other side of the map by Demon. And Demon now going to be reestablishing his war factory. Look at this. Look at the set of walls coming up around the super reactor. It almost might have been better to keep it sold off, but he wants to, I guess, create more and more problems for Demon. He's going to try and wall in Demon's war factory. That is what this guy is doing at the current moment. Oh my gosh, this combo of Tangus and Chopper VXs is absolutely frustrating for Demon to deal with. A total shutdown. A total shutdown by Sugspitze. I cannot believe how this game is going for Demon. A Terror Drone is out, which is going to help push away some of these Tangus, but uh, I don't know that this is the end of the road, this one Terror Drone. 
Oh my gosh. What an absolute boss kind of a move. And, hey, one Tangu is able to shut down one of these, uh, one Terradron, rather, able to shut down one of these Tangus, but, yeah, GG gets called. Demon dropping game number one. Wow, what a map from Sogspitze. What an opening and what a build that he was managing, that he managed to pull off there. All right. Kicking it off in style. Now, keep in mind, this is a best of five, so one map doesn't put anyone into a danger zone. Nothing like that. But still, an incredible powerhouse play, and you can see why I was talking about the respect he earned in the last tournament. Now, let's jump into game number two, which takes us to Infinity Isle. Now, over here on the left side, once again, repping the Cyan Empire, this is the tallest mountain, Sogspitze. He is the peak, if you will, especially after that last game. Holy cow. On the right side, as the Yellow Soviets, this is Demon, the powerhouse, the tournament winner, the guy who is number one at the current moment. He is your he is your Soviet player who is able to crush all, and when he doesn't play Soviets, he can crush them with the Empire. So this guy makes it happen. Going to be taking out that structure. And, of course, this is something that you tend to see, I guess, more from Soviet players. I feel like they're the ones, I guess, maybe you see sometimes an allied player. I feel like I saw Goldie, you know, nuking in his own building, something like that. But, at any rate, these guys are going to be taking out those structures. Gets the cap with the engineer. So, very nicely done for both of these players. Their openings are going how they would like. Now, we see the MCV move immediately to the high ground. For Sugspitze. So he is actually going to be dropping a Defender Core as well. So he's not going fast third refinery. He's not even going with War Factory immediately onto the high ground. He's going with a Defender Core and he's actually going to be pushing a bunch of infantry, a dojo, and oh my gosh. Okay, so he's delaying his third refinery and he's going nothing after that. He was building some walls somewhere else. So he's putting a lot of cash into this advance. He's putting a lot of cash into this aggression. DDF has probably the perfect response. If he would have moved his MCV, things could have been more problematic, but he went for a fast war factory or a normally timed war factory after the two the refineries. He's got his super reactor on the way. This is exactly what he wants. This right now is a delay tactic from uh, he has no real opportunity to get like a game ending move from purely purely this aggression that we see right here and actually as we can see with this dojo he's actually deciding to turn all of his imperial warriors back so he's just going to hold the line for a little while and actually he's going to cap the oil derrick that's annoying but not game winning once again we should see walls coming up here and of course oh he's actually going to pump out a couple of tank busters so that's going to add a lot of dps for killing vehicles and it means that this Defender VX won't be able to just simply be taken down by a Hammer Tank or two. So it actually does kind of transform this into a potential position of power. Uh, Bear gets sniped here. Don't know that he got any kills with that Terror Drone looking for openings. Won't quite be able to find one for an Infect, but will be able to find one for an Angle on harvesting, on slowing down that Harvester. Going to be forcing a Tangu or some other units to try and deal with that. Sickle goes for the jump. It's a wonderful to have these tank busters get broken up from their formation. Did a good amount of damage to that war factory, did Sukspitze, but I mean, this is not the kind of opening that we saw last time. Maybe if there was a bit of an engineer cap shenanigans going on here, but for now, Demon is in a so much better of an opening and of a position than in that previous game. Terra Drone packs it in. He calls it a day, and he says, I'm going to get on out of here. Sickle jumping up to the high ground. Again, something possible on Infinity Isle, but not as likely on Battle Base Beta. Just worlds of difference between these two games, game number one and game number two. Hammer Tank coming in for the crush. If he gets even one Tank Buster, that would be nice. And oh my gosh, if he gets two Tank Busters, no, they did drop down. But now Twin Blades are here, which means, ooh, low power as well. Oh, Things are falling about apart for Sugspitze. He's going to have to sell off this barracks over here. He's going to try and get that defender back online, but is it even really worth it? I mean, when you've got the twin blade and the hammer tank here, yeah, the tank busters might be able to do a bit of damage, but no, it's not even going to be possible. And uh, that's, the, that's it for this aggression. I mean, there's practically, there is nothing that Sugspitze can even do in this situation. I don't know if those two last two tank busters were actually a mistake. Uh, there's there's no value to be gained from these three tank busters here. You, you, you're you basically betting that Demon is going to make a slip up, but uh, 
no real value to be gained. Now, maybe he was thinking that they could be used as a bit of a delay tactic to try and distract this sort of thing, going for a couple of kills on Harvesters. If he's successful, then sure, call it a nice day. But uh, if he's not, then that's just more money down the drain. Hammer tank starting to work away at those walls. Nice split up of the forces. Dishonorable Discharge going to be doing a bit of damage to those structures. But other than that, the Harvesters were pulled off the line. But you're okay when you trade out the Tangus for them like that. Yeah, Dishonorable Discharge there didn't even do very much damage, so... A, a wonderful reaction and a wonderful bounce back compared to game number one that we're seeing from Dimon. Sug Spitze is doing some nice delay stuff. He's doing, he's got his tier two up and running on his mecha bay. He's got, of course, that three refinery economy rolling. But uh, this is not like what we saw in game number one. Wonderful in fact here from Dimon with a nice easy kill. We'll be not even trading out the twin blade immediately. The Tangu's no, those are MiGs actually in the sky, which means he's going to keep that Twin Blade safe. So, uh, that that was like the perfect harass from Dimon. Looks like he's going to be grabbing his Oiled Eric back. He's not just going to kill it since Sug Spitze had it. I think he had it for long enough for that to be worth it. He gained a little bit of cash overall from that Oiled Eric. But uh, breaking up these walls is the next move. Now, keep in mind that this is still three refinery versus three refinery. This fourth refinery is going to give the advantage back to Dimon. Naval Yard out on the water, and uh, I don't know, if we see a double or a triple wall going up, then I would think that we might be looking at a delay game until Shogun battleships come out onto the field, but I don't know, like in, in a straight up 1v1, I'm putting money on Demon versus Six should say every single time. I'm going to put, you know, 2 to 1 or 3 to 1 odds on Demon in a, in a best of 5 kind of a series, in a even a, just a random game, but with how things have gone, with a little more of an even opening, and with Demon about to be ahead economically, just straight up, I'm uh, I'm thinking things are looking real spicy for Demon now. Again, if we end up seeing tier three on the naval yard, well, suddenly we've got a different kind of equation. We've got something else cooking. We got a crane out on the field as well. Oh, the crane's over here. So that's where the free repairs are going to be. That's the free repair zone. And uh, somehow Demond managed to build an extra engineer for this observation post. So not a uh, not a big deal there, but, um, you know, it can do something. Yari Mini Subs in the north going to be able to grab one ore collector. Very late for that Tesla coil to try and go down and actually just going to be pulling up the twin blades. Cancels the Tesla coil and then rebuilds it. Maybe actually forcing some suicide tactics from these Yari Mini Subs and... Uh, once again, forcing the adaptive armor, forcing the ore collector kind of off the line there. Kind of annoying for Dimon, but not a big deal. Sug Spitze has not expanded out to the water, which means, of course, those terror drones aren't going to be doing anything. Another Yari Mini sub up there in the north. Tier 2, but no Tier 3, which means uh, I don't see a mainframe core anywhere on the map. So no Tier 3 coming out just, just yet. And uh, even no Tier 2 on the naval yard, so... Not sure, not sure what the long-term play is here for Sug Spitze. I mean, he doesn't have a better ground army necessarily. It could just be a big, a big harassment game. That can work for, uh, for Empire players. And this is like, this is classic Twin Blade stuff where you just run into different locations, you unload the rockets, and then you get on out of there. And it's like, yep, those rockets, that's where most of your DPS is coming from. Oh, three Bullfrogs, four MiGs are a powerful anti-air force and something that Sug Spitze doesn't want to, uh, doesn't want to contend with. And then look at this, the crane going to be handing out those repairs, which means everything's going to be back up to full health in just a couple of moments. Five bullfrogs now out here on the field. You know what that means. It's going to be hard army to break with the Tangus, with the Chopper VXs. Still no Tsunami tanks out here. And still no Tier 2. So again... Oh, he's even going to get the... He's even going to get the power plant. Oh, that's so nice. Demon more in control in this game. And yeah... The Harvester takes a bit of damage there, but suddenly with this crane here, harassing that location is far less meaningful than it was a couple of minutes ago. It just doesn't have the same kind of power, doesn't have the same kind of potency to set Dimon back. Observation Post taking a lot of damage from these tank busters, but guess who doesn't care about that very much at all? Anyone. No one cares about losing an Observation Post in this kind of situation. 
It will open up the middle of the map a little bit more for Subspitze. Ooh, a little bit of damage there. Not enough to matter. Not enough to make a difference. Bear goes down. Imperial Warrior also goes down. Migs are going to engage the Tangus a little bit there. Mostly point defense drones were the loss. One or two Tangus going down. Uh, Hammer Tanks, they're just going to stomp all over this. Hey, you open up the front door. I might try and walk inside, or at least you've trapped your friends outside, and now the Twin Blades can deal with them. Um... Sugspitze, what is your what is your response to this? Genuinely asking, not even asking for a friend. I'm genuinely asking. He's gonna try something. So in a in a perfect world, this could go his way. Uh, how do you get from this world to that perfect world? Now that's a good question that I have no idea what the answer is, but uh. Like, the hammer tank numbers aren't crazy high. If there were three more hammer tanks, then it would be a different kind of a equation. But, like, there's... I don't know. There's an opportunity here. Okay, killing off the Twin Blades. If he's able to catch them, one goes down, but he trades it out for a Harvester, so that's okay. And the Tangus aren't in the sky. Even if they were, the Migs and the Bullfrogs would probably be there to respond. So, you know, if you kill all of the Twin Blades, maybe there's, maybe there's something to talk about. But... There are four Twin Blades in the sky, which means which way are you going to try and run the equation? Whichever way you try and run the numbers, they uh, they don't really work out in favor of Subspitze. MCV cell, so it's up to Tier 3. The MCV cell did indeed happen. Mainframe core down there, and uh, Tier 2, potentially Tier 3, going to be coming up here. And MCV cell gives him some extra cash. Engineer going to be doing something. Oh, no, that's not where the extra... Eh, never mind. So five refinery Demon. He's of course got his own tier three. You guys saw the battle lab coming up a little bit a little while ago. Yeah, V four's out on the field. So say what you like, but uh, we got one guy with a crazy big ground army. Okay, here we go. We got Shogun battleships. The potential is here, which means the equation now change. Uh, being able to buy time, it is an opportunity for both of these guys. But dreadnoughts are here, so actually buying time works out in favor of Demon considering ba -ba -da -ba, no shoguns. So uh I don't want to make this sound not exciting, but I'm really curious as to how Sugspitze is going to manage to pull this one out, because this is gonna be some incredible play if he manages to win this game. Otherwise, uh Demon is just gonna have to barf this game a little bit here and uh Bye-bye, Refinery. So, the economic advantage. Okay, Eureka. These are all good tools for Sugspitze. Ooh, nice. He grabbed the observation post that he spent several minutes killing. Or trying to kill. All right, so with Eureka, with the King Onis, we have some tools that can lead to changing of the game. Tesla Troopers get annihilated. Why don't people build Tesla Troopers? Well, because they mostly just die. Uh, never mind. Eureka's dead. Apocalypse tanks are here. V4s do some splash to that King Oni. Bullfrogs are going to get the kill, and the MiGs come in. Total decimation. Zugspitze has been defeated. And what a contrast. Game one, game two, game one. Fast and furious. Zugspitze in the lead. Total domination. Game two, slow, methodical, plotting, planning, and Demon takes the win pretty easily ahead for a good chunk of that. Let's take a look at the money graph. And uh, we see that they're pretty equal for most of the game. But uh, once, you know, Refinery, what was it, 4 and then 5 start coming up much, much faster for Demon. So Spitze is just sitting on those three and uh, no real victory in sight for him. That will do it for this game. Let's see what happens in game number three. Now that things are even, who takes the lead? which is on Cabana Republic. Now, of course, the thing about this being a finals that's only a best of five, it means whoever wins game number three in this 1-1 kind of situation is immediately on to match point. We see the MCV move from our Cyan Empire over here on the left side, going for a triple refinery opening. Okay, boys, check it out. This is Sugspitze. 
I think I've said it every differently every single time. Going for a bit more of a standard game on the right side of the map as the yellow Soviets. This is Demon. All right, people sometimes ask, I play Soviets, my opponent plays Empire, they open three ref. How do I deal with it? Well, this is kind of step number one for Demon. He's sending this bear out and he has seen no dojos. He has seen no Imperial Warriors, no Dragonflies, a.k.a. Burst Drones. He's seen nothing. Normally, there should be one or two uh, dojos trying to kill this engineer over here. Sometimes you see players go for a fast war factory literally to get out the... Uh, whoa, he went Naval Yard. Okay, so Naval Yard with the Bullfrog and the Flag Troopers. This is really interesting from Demon. But, I mean, we've seen on other games Demon will get out that Terror Drone really quick to be able to grab the Dojo as it tries to get that Engineer. And, of course, at this point, Demon has... He has divined what is going on. He's used his scouting bear and his intelligence to determine, hey, what's going on? Oh, my opponent opened fast three refineries. He's got that mecha bay up and running. Where's the transform? No transform. And that's a bad, that's a dead tangu. So um, step number one, catch a free tangu and make your opponent waste money for nothing. That is step number one of how to defeat a, uh, a triple ref empire player. Anyways, I was saying, pacing is so important for this because, hey, you get... Ooh, actually, Stingray. So this naval yard is not just for the bullfrog. It's for two Stingrays. Immediately, we're going to be seeing some pressure from Demon, and this is great for him. Now, keep in mind, with this being a best of five, one win here puts him into match point kind of scenario, and, of course, it might even tilt Sugspitze, who went for a fast tier two on his mecha bay. It might even tilt him. This is a tough choice because you got a bullfrog with flak troopers on your front door. Are you going to try and split off a tsunami tank to go down to the south and save your power plant? Or are you going to try and deal with the flak troopers, which are now... Oh my gosh, he's putting a battle bunker. Come on! A battle bunker on the high ground with four flak troopers? This is just a plane. Who does that? No one does that. That's who. What the, what the heck, man? Demon, you are a monster, and this is, like, not even nice. Now, this is going to be a very tough position to break. Of course, yes, you can break it, but uh, you know how much damage four flak troopers in a battle bunker can do? A crazy amount. Yeah, all right, so Sukspitze has defended his power, his uh, generator there, and Demon is having a hard time actually getting out his third refinery. A little bit of harassment here, but ooh, this flak trooper is maybe going to catch the barracks. The engineer should be able to hop inside that oil derrick without any trouble, and the, uh, the Imperial Warrior actually gets the kill on the flak trooper, so that's really nice for Demon. Ooh, Tangu does end up getting eliminated there, but the refinery does go down, so Demon is feeling real good. He's feeling real good about this opening. My gosh, what an annoying position. And yeah, these red bursts do indicate a fully heroic flak trooper that has gone up there. So the interesting thing about the tsunami tanks is, uh, you know, they can go out onto the water, which is mostly where Damon is. He's got these refineries here, but then he's mostly out on the water. And uh, the tsunami tanks can run out there, but as soon as they run out there, they don't have the power of the infantry to join them. So it's just up to the tsunami tanks, and then it's going to be up to how Jamon can handle the tsunami tanks out on the water. Back at home, Stingray is going to start breaking stuff down. Now, keep in mind, the Stingrays can try and jump over to the saving grace of those flak troopers, but a nice surround on this MCV. It's going to take a while for the tsunami tanks to cut it down, but they will eventually cut it down. Tangus back home have not quite been dealt with. One of them is still here to get the kill on that harvester, or at least force it off the line. One harvester does go down. Tsunami tanks continue to break down that MCV, and for now, he has been pushed out of Sugspitze's base. Two tank busters here are going to maybe try and help out with the DPS, but over here... All right, so two Stingrays. They're going to be able to push away these Tsunami Tanks. Sugspitze does not want to sacrifice these guys. No, uh, nice overcharge there by Demon to force away those Tsunami Tanks. The MCV was getting dangerously low on HP. Harvester almost on back up and running, and Demon actually able to make Stingrays work both on land, both at sea, 
and uh, Tier 2 Mecha Bay still churning away, but the income is not what he was hoping. He was hoping to have that Tier 2 Mecha Bay and 3 Refinery Economy plus an Oil Derrick instead of just 2 Refinery Economy. Nice transform here is going to maybe, ooh, immediately into the Reactive Armor, which means it's going to take a long time for that Tango to finally, finally get the kill on that Ore Collector. How many Tangos do you have to trade off to try and get the kill on those Ore Collectors? The answer turns out to be quite a few. Every Tsunami Tank that goes down just worsens Sugspitze's situation. Another Tangu does go down, which means these Harvesters can get back to work. It might be a little bit slow, but the Super Reactor is finally here, which means even Akula subs could be getting out onto the field. And it uh, looks like this one Tsunami Tank is still hanging around. The third refinery was crushed, so things are starting to look up for Sugspitze. But he's really just reduced Demon's economy back to what he's got which is those two refineries plus that oil derrick. Now an engineer out on the map. Maybe he can make something happen with that. Oh, this tsunami tank getting surrounded and killed by those stingrays. Takes a couple of stingrays with him. The dishonorable discharge being used to advantage there. Oh, sudden transport. Okay. Everything's out on the water, though, so the stingrays will be able to defend pretty darn easily. Uh, I don't... Maybe... Like, maybe he could... Get a refinery, but I don't know that he can. A little bit of cash back there for Demon. And, uh, no, he's keeping his MCV, so he's not going for the Crusher Crane and then crushing the MCV or selling it off or anything like that, but... Oh, it's actually Tank Busters inside of here. It's not the Engineer, so he's going to pop out. He's going to do what damage he could. If those Harvesters weren't quite as well protected than that, that would actually be a great Harvester killing move, especially since these Harvesters are not weakened. That one got healed up, but that one is weakened. So, man, on paper, that sounded like a better idea than it turned out to be for Sugspitze. Toxin's going to be able to... No, it's actually going to be satellites, not toxins. I thought he was going to use the toxins to clear the building. Instead, the satellites will just weaken it a little bit there. And it's going to be Imperial Warriors who are going to try and cut down this dog, or uh, this bear, rather, or something. And uh, Conscript's going to be trying to even things on, even things out. More bears coming out onto the front lines, and they do jump inside of that sudden transport. Nicely done there by Dim by Sugspitze. He manages to escape for now. But what a weird low econ game this has turned into. And keep in mind, the MCV cell was quite a while ago. So we're just we're going to be on two refinery. We're going to be on tier two for basically the rest of this game. Maybe he manages to get enough income out to uh, to be able to rebuild his MCV. Oh man, this is so sad. We saw that Tangu leave the base and we saw those flak cannon shots explode, those flak trooper shots explode in the skies as, uh, as that Tangu left the base with half its health. So that battle bunker is still buying a lot of value for Demon. Again, nice harassment coming in here for Sugspitze. If he's able to get the kill on this Harvester Dishonorable Discharge, doesn't finish it off. I thought maybe it would. The Bullfrog did go down, granting a Terror Drone there to, uh, to Demon. And the MCV will certainly go down from this position. No way he can save it, as it does get eliminated there. So that's going to be the loss of the superpowers, or the support powers, rather. The Engineer does survive. Stingray is going to be the response, but of course there are also Twin Blades in the sky, which means this can forever go into Demon's favor. Nice infect there by Demon with the heroic Tsunami Tank going down to the Terror Drone. Tangus do show up to try and cut out the MiGs, to try and cut out the Twin Blades, and it looks like it will barely be successful, but the Bullfrogs are still on the ground to potentially deal with those Tangus. So one Twin Blade almost going down. A fully heroic Stingray also gets eliminated. A double Vet Tsunami Tank goes down, and the Terror Drone gets another. In fact, everything starting to go down. But two Tsunami Tanks, they're still here. One Terror Drone, can he actually kill everything inside of there? The airfield is so close to going down. Dimon desperately wants to save this, and he is going to lose the airfield, handing away heroic veterancy to that Tangu. Dimon desperately trying to get out everything he can. He's going to overcharge the Stingray immediately, gets two kills for it, and forces the Tangus into the sky. Oh my gosh, okay. So War Factory actually gets uh, canceled there, or sold off, and then the airfield is put in its place. Wow, Demon desperately, desperately trying to come up with answers here. And Sugspitze training out almost all of his army in that attack. I don't know that he did enough damage. If he had killed a refinery alongside of that, 
I would say, okay, now we're into a good situation, but because it's still two refinery versus three refinery and Sugspitze uh, traded out pretty much his whole army, I don't feel good for him. He did manage to kill a lot of stuff of Demond, and he, if he gets to the airfield, that's even better for him in terms of evening things up. Nice grab of that oil derrick by Demond. I'm not sure how long he's actually had that. Walls are coming up, and they're barely going to be saving this airfield. They're going to be cutting off those Tangus, and they may get this reactor kill, but that's uh, that's not the biggest of deals. Wow, that, uh, that Imperial Warrior, he's like, this guy has the worst aim ever. Bear up there, just keeping an eye on a potential 4th and 5th refinery location. MiG could get shut down immediately. Uh, doesn't quite get the kill, so the repairs will manage to save it. And that's just the thing about, like, when you've got a crane, losing your MCV doesn't mean quite as much as it did when it was just your MCV. MiG pops on out. He's going to try and go toe-to-toe. -to -toe. She's going to try and go toe-to-toe -to -toe with those Tangus. The answer is no, as this Chopper VX is going to get the kill on that airfield. Beautifully done there by Sugspitze. And he is slowly clawing his way back into this game. He is finding every angle, every opportunity to make something happen. A third airfield finally coming up here for Demon Once again, trying to find that winning combination that's going to allow him to take game number three. What a weird series this has been. What a great finals this has produced from these two guys. Absolute uh, legends in this series. Just doing incredibly well to showcase very weird and fun games. One Tangu going down on the transform there. And Tsunami Tanks here, they may... Well, no, never mind. The equation totally changes as soon as that Tangu goes down because now the Twin Blade is un contested in the skies and it doesn't matter that the stingrays got eliminated because guess what stingrays are cheaper well the twin blade goes down and the tank who goes down so once again we're at this like weird game and okay so Spitze has been defeated demon uh takes that game not with a really convincing army engagement where he just crushed his opponent but Bleeding out those last few units was, I guess, too, too much for our Empire player. And resource graph, I think, is going to reveal. Yep, that's that power of that three refineries. We can see the advantage early on going to Sugspitze, but then Demon claiming it back with his own play, killing his, refi his opponent's refinery, and then clawing back with his own three refineries, eventually being established pretty strongly there. Whew. That was such a crazy back and forth, but the advantage now goes to Demon. So he needs one more game to claim the victory in For the Win 72. Let's find out what happens in game number four. Which takes us to Snow Plow and in the north as the Cyan Empire he is currently down 1 2. This is Stugspitze. And in the south as the Yellow. Soviets feeling good going for double racks. This is Dimon. Dimon showing us that powerhouse Soviet play, but not in a conventional fashion in that last game. I'd say game number two was more of what we would expect to see from a nice, slow Soviet crushing. But game number three, I that one was funky, funky. Gets the kill on that flak trooper. Nicely done by Sugspitze. But, I mean, Demon did get, did get the kill on the dojo. So, well done by him. Let's take a quick check-in with these players. All right, two refineries coming up. Normal timings from both of these guys. Burst drone is going to confirm all of that. So, the scout is good for Sugspitze. Demon will lose this oil derrick over on the right side, and by lose, I just mean he won't get the first capture on it, which means he doesn't get the cash back. His engineer will have to do get the money the old way. Ooh, these Imperial Warriors, they were making it a little bit dicey there, and grabbing those buildings just means that this engineer cap is going to be super, super late. Wow, okay, no, he's not even going for the engineer cap. He just killed his own engineer. Okay... This is about the worst opening that Demon could have asked for. Not actually the worst. He's going to go War Factory into Super Reactor. Of course, as you can see, a little bit strapped for cash. 
But the first Terror Drone is now out. Burst Drone going to be getting killed off of that uh, Harvester. And the Terror Drone going to be hanging out there in the water. Back on the Spitze side of the map, third refinery coming up at a more normal timing. He, of course, got his dojos out. He got his extra power plants out at a more normal timing. Even grabbing this house over here, a lovely little move there. Just gives him a bit of extra vision, a bit of extra map control. And uh, that bridge is down, but this one over here, it is still up. A single... Well, it was spotted immediately, and it will be shut down immediately. Nicely done. Okay, nothing really to talk about there. Um, if you're playing Empire, keep your eyes out for uh, sneaky, sneaky flak troopers, but do exactly that and you will be fine. Terror Drone camping out next to this dojo, so Demon did manage to grab this oil derrick, and uh, that's okay. He got the one, he didn't get the other, but that's okay, all things considered. Hammer Tank heading out through the middle of the map. Going to be seeing what he can see, see if he can put on some early, early pressure. And uh, the timing of the Tier 2 is going to tell us a lot because Hammer Tanks are going to be hard to deal with when it's just Tier 1. Much, much faster Tier 2 tech up from Demon than from Suchspitze. And uh, the harassment is going to be the key. So if he can get lots of damage with this harassment, we're seeing the Double Tangu harass right there. And, uh, of course, Demon is going to be packing up that Ore Collector in uh, not quite both locations. A little bit of lag on the guy on the left. But uh, this Ore Collector on the right is going to be getting back to work momentarily. Terror Drone in the north looking for an open angle. But uh, not actually going to get it. Instead, the Hammer Tank is going to get the kill. So I cannot believe that this Hammer Tank drove all the way across the map and he's going to get an easy kill on a Tengu. He's going to get an easy kill on a Harvester. And then he could potentially even escape. This is going to be a little bit problematic for Sugspitze to deal with. Uh, when you go the super delayed tier 2 like this, okay, now that the Chopper VX is out, it again, once again, changes the equation. He's going for a secure kill with the wall so he can get that final kill. He can knock down that hammer tank. But, I mean, trading out one hammer tank for one ore collector, you're going to be okay with that kind of a situation as a Soviet player. Beautiful walls by Sugspitze and Dimon letting that Tangu, letting that, uh, not Tangu, but that Terror Drone die is a, is a bit of a needless death, but not again the end of the world, so we don't have to worry about it too, too much. Uh, gonna be leeching down this ore refineries for as much as he can. Two hammer tanks down. Great response by Sugspitze. Uh, that, that was just, that was just a, a, like, Lovely little set of uh, of dealing with that harassment. This is not great, though. Oh, that's not good. He totally forgot to rebuild that ore collector. If that goes on for another minute, that may be the game deciding move is to kill that one ore collector. Uh, yeah, still nothing. So you're feeling good because you got three refinery economy because you killed two hammer tanks, a terror drone, and you only lost one harvester and a tangu for it. But uh, then suddenly... You've been on two refinery economy for minute after minute, and your opponent is sitting pretty on those three refineries. Now, he did kill the oil derrick we saw a moment ago, but uh, and Sugspitze still has his, so he has that little bit of extra grace, but not it's, it's not necessarily going to be enough. Now, the responses have been pretty good to this harassment, and certainly Sugspitze wants to escape out onto the water. He doesn't want to give away any more Tangus if he doesn't have to. He needs to be very careful. Ooh, this Bullfrog. Ooh, the angle wasn't good enough. Sugspitze could have dived on that. Two Tangu or two Chopper VXs can get the kill on that Bullfrog, but, um, but not from that kind of an angle. You need to kind of surprise them because of the range difference. Uh, satellites do drop on that... Ore Collector, but it's not enough to kill it. It just wounds it quite heavily there, so it's going to be harvesting at a lower income rate, which, again, just cuts the knife a little bit deeper, a little bit more. And I almost feel bad because with with the mistake of not rebuilding a harvester like that, it almost feels like what should be a relatively even game is just slipping further and further away from Sugspitze, and not because he's, like, miscontrolling an army or he's making a critical strategic move, like he walked into a bad engagement that he should have known not to walk into, but he either didn't realize that he didn't slap F on that refinery, or he just overlooked it. 
That dojo finally going down. I mean, it was a cute dojo. I don't think anything was much produced out of it that did anything in the game. But it's always a cute move to kind of have that bit of an advantage of having a dojo on your opponent's side of the map to, you know, throw out some tank busters, maybe go for some harassment. But things are turning up. Demon, I mean, he's got the tier two. He's got the hammer tanks. Airfield going to be coming down as well. He's got that economy up and rolling. No, don't try and go tier three on two refinery economy. Ba -ba -da -ba. And this guy, both empty. And this is harvesting at a lower rate. Which, uh, if you guys did not know, units that are heavily damaged move more slowly than uh, units at, like, half or full health. So, your, your harvesters are literally just harvesting slower. And the Dishonorable Discharge won't even be used to kill off that ore collector. The Tangu, the Terror Drone makes sure of it, and... Again, a, a micro thing that over time just starts adding up. Hey, here we go. Someone who won the clock. How many minutes well, did he not have that harvester? Man, and he's down one two as well. Yikes! What a what a time to have that happen. Lovely bear out here. Always keep an eye on your opponent's expansions if you can. Uh, information does not win you the game, certainly, but information certainly helps you to win the game. Being able to know how many expansions your opponent has, what their economy is like in comparison to yours, helps you to understand what kind of risks you should take. MCV is still here, which honestly I'm kind of surprised. He's got the tier 3, so uh, you, might, you might even need to sell off the MCV. It loses you the support powers, but it's not the end of the world. Imperial Warriors were unable to make any big moves happen. Migs will be able to catch nothing as uh, this Tangu won't actually transform. It'll just get killed by the Twin Blades. Nope, never mind. They're going to have to pull back because of the Striker VXs. So one by one, the bridges all get eliminated. They all get cut up. And uh, this Harvester is still working away. All right. So we're, we're back up to three Refinery Economy. And it's not quite three refinery economy, but the extra income from this oil derrick will help offset that. So if we see a big game winning engagement here, then that could be the thing that allows Sugspitze to win. But he has kind of a weak army on the ground. And if he is not able to get some big damage out with this wave force artillery, then things are going to be more difficult. Trading out those hammer tanks for the King Oni is probably going to be feeling okay for, uh, for Dimon. Again, if he's just able to buy a little bit of time with this army, things are still going to be looking good for Demon. Wave Force Artillery starting to move forward. Refinery going down is certainly not good for him, but it's not necessarily the end of the world. He just has to be very careful with this army. Uh, Zugspitze, he can rebuild after this army, but he doesn't want to have to. Demon is going to have to handle this engagement very carefully. Airfield does go down, which means these Twin Blades are it. They're going to be able to crush all of those Strikers, and the MiGs clean up the Tangus, so now it's Demon's game. What are you going to do against the against the Twin Blades when you've got a Wave Force Artillery? It doesn't shoot up. Fourth Refinery coming back up for Demon. The entire army got crushed, and Shugspitze has been reset. He's got nothing that shoots up right now. He sold his MCV. There's the engineer. He's rebuilding his Striker VX core of his army. But uh, it didn't even matter, man. There was so many Twin Blades. He's still got four of them. He's getting them repaired up. He needs to get that Bullfrog back up to full HP. He needs to get himself a couple of Hammer Tanks as well. But uh, that's the thing. King Oni's Wave Force Artillery, they don't shoot up. So as soon as you deal with the anti-air... The Twin Blades can sweep up the rest of the army without any trouble at all. Wouldn't even be a bad idea to see uh, to see Dimon if he if he feels that there's an opportunity and an opening to go and take out this oil derrick, take out take a couple of strikes against it. Bear in the middle of the map. Dimon is not out of the woods yet. He loses a lot. Oh my gosh! Double infect the King Oni and th two of the Striker VXs. Um, he will trade out that army for a bunch of bears any day. Forced to kill his own Striker VXs to stop the, the other Strikers from being infected. 
Oh my gosh, Demon going to be splitting off a bit of an army to go for some harvester killing. He's keeping his MiGs with his army, which means he can deal with Tangus because the Strikers are going to take a really long time to walk their way back across the map. The tank busters all get killed. It's just down to the King Oni. And keep in mind, behind this, more economy is going down for Sugspitze. He's going to be losing more harvesters. And goodbye, third harvester. There's no active income for Sugspitze. This army is what he's got, and then he has to rebuild his harvesters before he can properly rebuild his his economy, uh, his army rather. Oh man, this just went totally wrong in the last minute or two. GG gets called, and Damon will take the finals in a 3-1 fashion. Four games done and dusted. A uh. A sad turn in the last, yikes, half of the game. Half of the game. But an impressive showing other than that from Sugspitze. And he nearly had it. Again, the anti-air being the weakness. Once that was gone, the Twin Blades were unstoppable. And that's where those Tier 3, very powerful, but somewhat fragile armies from Empire become problematic. You know, we've all seen Athena cannons going down to the same sort of thing, or V4s. But the difference is, Demon never spent the cash on going up to that Tier 3. He was just subsiding on that Tier 2 army, and he had the air advantage. Which means he didn't have to spend the cash going up there. All in all, a great showing from Demon. Extra 600 credits per minute is what that ended up being. But again, Sugspitze was actually ahead in the early part of the game in terms of economy, which means once it traded over, it was way in Demon's favor. That will do it for this game, for this series. Again, a big shout-out and a big thank you to Rage of Heat, the absolute man himself, putting on this tournament, putting on two tournaments in one day, technically, and that will do it. Big love to both of these guys for a great finals, and this will wrap up this game for like the eighth time of me saying that. Thank you all very much for watching, and this is Cybert, signing out.